here we have the starter that we just made today. And you can see it really just is inactive, just kind of a flower water paste. And you can see it's still the flower water paste, but it's risen overnight. So by tomorrow, this one will have the same rise. And that's the microbes that have already moved into the flour and water mixture. And they're starting to digest those sugars and starches to create acids and carbon dioxide and some aromas. You can actually take a sniff and smell that it smells different from just the flour and water mixture. Now that you've got a happy, healthy starter, how do we keep it that way and what can we bake with it? First, we'll start by back slapping or removing part of the starter twice a day. So we'll start by removing half a cup and this sourdough starter bit that you're removing is the back slap. Keep it, this is gold. We don't add an entire half cup of flour and water back. We're just gonna use a quarter cup of each. So we have a quarter cup of flour, a quarter cup of water that again, we've set out on the counter overnight to dechlorinate. So you add your equal parts, flour and water. And again, we'll just mix that completely. And if you're planning to bake with this in the near future, you'll replace your paper towel and rubber band lid. But if you're putting this starter back in the fridge, then you wanna use a solid lid made of plastic or metal. A countertop starter will need to continue to be fed twice a day, ideal if you plan to bake a few times a week. For those who bake less frequently, you can keep your starter in the fridge. But the longer you wait, the greater the risk that you'll starve your starter. You'll notice that even a dormant starter will get hungry, as you can see by the thick layer of alcohol it produces. But sourdough starters are incredibly hearty. But whenever you're ready to bake, keep the back slop. You can also store it in the fridge to stockpile until you're ready. The most obvious thing to bake is sourdough bread, but you can also make sourdough pancakes or waffles or cornbread or biscuits, even a fermented sourdough cake. Lots of people think of sourdough as a super sour, tangy food, but a lot of sourdough foods are pretty mild. The flavor depends partly on how long you let the dough ferment and partly on what kind of flour you use, which makes total sense. The longer you let the bacteria grow, the more time they have to produce acids and the more sour the dough tastes. With so many combinations, there's plenty of opportunity to go out and try your own food experiments.